He is absolutely fabulous. No, he wasn't in that show. He was in another BBC hit show, Early Doors. It's the wonderful Phil Mealy. Hello. Hi, Michelle. How are Hello you? there. Hey, listen, everybody that has appeared on this show so far is related to you. It's, this isn't like long lost families. You're not going to turn out your sister or something, are you? Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe there is a dark secret that I don't know, Phil. Because you know, my hair is getting, well, mine's getting a bit light. <laughs> you know, so maybe that's it. Yeah, all good. I wouldn't mind being your sister, Phil, because I think we'd have a right laugh. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've got, I've got, uh, I've got a sister. I'm not looking for any more. I've got, I've got a good sister. She's great. Our Alice, you know, oh yeah, she's she's solid as a rock. She's great. One of them. And have you got any brothers and sisters? I haven't. I was an only child. I got very spoiled. So I'm not saying that that was a bad thing. Uh, well, I I fought like me and our Alison fought like cat and dog when we were, you know, in the teenage years. But now she's like my best mate. Go to the football, go to United. Well, you know, we still go to United. We will be doing next season. So yeah, so oh well, good. I'm hoping that my mini me's that you saw there, Daisy and Harry. I do hope that they become lifelong friends because they certainly bicker, Phil. Yeah, they will be at the moment, but you just gotta kind of they'll, they'll get thick as thieves and you'll be saying what are you two whispering about over there and there'll be all that kind of stuff yeah, yeah. anyway we're chatting about family we should Sorry, be talking yeah, about be this fantastic thing that you're bringing to arley hall and gardens yeah. do you know what early doors was absolutely fantastic i know it was quite a while ago now i think we're talking about we're talking 12 years ago or is it more more, the, the series itself was on in 2004, 2005, I think. So I don't know how long, so my maths isn't very good. And if you see me writing, the English isn't very good either, but there you go. But yeah, but we did. So we did the live shows in 2018 and 2019. Uh, and this is what uh, we, when we did, the, we started off, it, it, I don't know if you remember, we, we, we started it off because me and Craig, we'd always kind of thought about doing a. And then we in 2018, it was, we, we thought, right, OK, let's, let's see if we can still cut the mustard, really. So we wrote, uh, we started writing it in secret. We did six months on it and just to see if we could still, you know, put it together. Uh, and we did. And then we sort of got the rest of the cast together and we weren't sure what the audience would be like or with the appetite would still be there but the lowry the small venue in the lowry which is a 500 seater and uh it sold out like that and which we were delighted surprised and delighted about and then we put it on they moved it to the big theater at the lowry 1200 seater that sold out and then the producer said look and there are people are asking over the country so that's we ended up playing. We ended up playing marinas like Liverpool, the Echo Arena, the MEN Arena. We went from like people at the Lowry to seven thousand people at the Manchester Arena. And what was that like? Did you feel like a pop star? Um, no, uh, I was like to be a pop star. So the, the, we we played the Hammersmith Odeon, uh, which is obviously world, you know, and and that was sold out which is really weird because it was in London. I was thinking, you know, we're going to have to hold signs up so they can understand what we say. I thought we had, like, you know, like a certain view in sign language, but like but Northern at the side of the stage. But anyway, uh, but I felt like a pop star there because they had all pictures of Bowie and his last concert there and Queen and the Beatles. So, and, and it's just a world famous book. It was surreal, really. It was very bizarre because for me and Craig, we just thought, well, 500 people. If we get people who, you know, and it just went crazy but i think it was it was a really iconic show because what you got is you got the real northern charm it was set in the grapes it yeah. was kind of the regulars that went in it's something that people relate to with like their own local pub wasn't it so yeah. and you had like the in catchphrases as well i know yeah yeah like oh i'll stay on the own but, uh, you know, and crime can't crack itself with the cops and all that. I think, to be honest, um, as, as far as, as the relatability is concerned, 
I think it's one of those things that, I mean, it works because it's in a pub, but be in a pub or even in a, even in your own home, you can have somebody sat in the corner who's miserable. It's usually me these days, but you know what I mean? It's a fact. I think you could just relate to those characters, really, you know, that, well, people obviously did, you know, which is the great thing. And the mother-in-law or the mother upstairs who's controlling everything as well. I mean, lots of people can, can relate to that. So I think it was, and also one of the things about it, it is purposely, it's very warm, you know, even though they're sort of taking them um, when we first gave it the commissioners, they was they were saying in the BBC was saying, why don't these people like each other? And we were like, well, they're always sort of having a go or taking the Mickey out of each other. I said, well, that's they just show that's this a sign of affection. If they just ignore you, if they didn't, well, they, they take the Mickey out of it, you know. But actually, you know, they really there's a lot of affection for each other. And I think as the series progressed, I think, I think. Obviously, northern people, you know, from our area. But I mean, it was popular in the country. But got it, you know. I think, yeah. If you're sort of working class and middle class, and you you you're in those areas, you you, you get what you know. You, you get what we were trying to achieve. You know. Um, I, 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 yeah. Well, my mother-in-law is a huge fan of early oh, doors, oh, and she awesome. went to the Lowry performance in the big oh, theatre. Awesome. Oh. And she said, I don't know how they kept it all together. And there was a few times there was a little bit of corpsing going on because yeah. you're all having a damn good time, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, the cast get on. I know it's a cliche to say it, but they are great. And we just get on so well. And me and John Craig, we, since we work part time at Tesco stacking shelves. So I've known Craig for, oh, I'm going to give me about four probably yeah 40 years so you know we we've, we've been mates for that long so it's it's kind of, it's just great to be getting up you know and, and we were sort of messing up we had a script obviously because we wrote it but then there'd be times where i'd throw something in to try and make it throw something in to try and just you know jolt me up so there's quite a few moments like that i always and we've left it in in the so the live show Get onto that, I guess, is, is um, because it happened so quickly and it was sort of a snowball effect, really. We've never organized to do a happy film for a DVD or anything like that. Um, and afterwards, a lot of people who couldn't make it or heard about it were saying, Oh, you know, or even people who I was laughing at this and I missed that. You know, when you do, you watch something, you'll, if you watch, you know, a, a, a comedy you're enjoying, you're missing bits. Mm -hmm. So we were like, well, we haven't got any film, we haven't got any footage. And I spoke to the production manager uh, last year and he said, oh, I have. So what do you mean you have? He said, well, the guys who filmed the, when we played the arena, you know, it's how it's, it's projected onto the screens at the side of the stage. The, the guys who've done that had actually kept the footage of that. I don't know if they were fans or what, but they kept the footage and sent it to him. So we looked at it. And I was like, it's great, it's fantastic. And it was because it was something that was unexpected and sort of a gift, really, that, you know, we, we spoke and said, you know, this would be great to do something, pass the gift on, if you like, to pass the good fortune of somebody actually filming it. So we just thought the Chris, you know, everybody in this area, if it's not a family, it's a friend or a friend of a friend, you know somebody, who has had um, in treatment by them, they just do such a, an, um, a wonderful job, you know, and, you know, not just for, for in the Northwest, but all over, all over the world, and aren't they? And I know that their, their funding has been down over COVID because, of course, people haven't been to be able to do cycle rides and charity run events that they do. And they've really, you know, the, the NHS junk fund, you know, it's above, way beyond they, they, their expenses are way beyond what the NHS do. So we just thought it'd be a really great fit, you know, and to do something. So that's why we're doing idea initially. We went to 
I, I got in touch with them and they said, oh, we'd love it. So we're doing a, a drive-in movie, which, which was their idea, Garden. So the, the recording of the live show, we're doing a and a with the cast, first of all, before they, before they show the film. Uh, then they do uh, showing the first half, which is obviously shot at the at Manchester Arena. Then they've got a little beer tent that they call the grapes, so you'd be able to have a drink in there. I love that. Yeah, uh, and then and obviously the second half, and then after that, it's going to be available on their website to download, uh, so to to rent for people all over the country and. Um, and then all the proceeds from any from that, and all the proceeds from from the download to the Christie. So it's just you know just something we 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 delight to be able to be in a position to do. You know, I think it's marvelous. It really is because, like you say, it's raising money for the charity, the Christie, and yeah. they are fantastic. And yeah. you know, and so many fans of Early Doors will get the chance to see it if they didn't get to see it on tour Absolutely. and in a different way I, I love the fact that you've got the Q&A with the cast and uh, yeah. I believe I am interviewing the cast so you oh. know get ready for some questions on the stage oh, fantastic. <laughs> oh that's good I didn't know that oh that's Did you know? great hey, that's so, like breaking well, news Phil yeah don't don't surprise me with anything like don't you know what I mean I want to get you I can need some questions up front I know. I know. Well, me, yeah. You know what? You said it, I'd surprise you as being your sister. Now I've surprised you saying, I'm, I'm going to be hosting it. I'm going to yeah. be asking you questions, Phil. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Right, well, I look forward to that. Thank you. It's going to be a really, really good night, a special night. It doesn't matter if it rains because it's yeah, it a drive in. Matter. It's driving. Uh, it's as if you're worried about COVID and still. And then it's driving again, you know, so that's obviously a distance. But it's a nice night. Why are you in Because it's going to be weird for me because I've never seen it. I mean, I've not, you know, I haven't actually, of course, I was always on the other side. Yeah. So to be able to sit in an audience, I've not seen it with an audience, obviously. So to be able to, I'm hoping everyone will be when the wind is down because I'll be shouting the catchphrases out with everybody else. You'll be doing all the heckle, won't you? Stuff. But look at the setting. This is where it is. Oh, I mean, stunning, I isn't it? Yeah, I went there to, to have a look where they were where they were going to show it, and it, it's in the got it's absolutely gorgeous. Of Peaky Blinders, there, you know. No way. Um, yeah, yeah, because uh, they were telling me all about it, uh, and in the the area that we've got, so gorgeous, and they're going to put lights up. It's going to look, and it's you know it's all greenery, and it's going to look absolutely beautiful. I, I really can't wait. I'm I'm so looking forward to it. Well, we've had a few people commenting while she have been on, and oh, uh, we've got a lovely one from Lorraine that says, oh, my God, I have to go that. So I think you're going to see Lorraine at the event, definitely. Okay. Say hello, Lorraine. Beat your horn. <laughs> <laughs> beep, beep. And then also we've got one from Nikki who says, it sounds amazing. I think that's a general consensus, you know, and we all want to go out and have a great night. We all want a laugh as well. And at the same time, you're doing it for something that's absolutely blooming brilliant. Well, it is. And, you know, I, I can't stress enough how, you know, it's just, but I, I feel just lucky to be in a position where we can do something and we can do something that affects so many people, as I've said before. Everybody, you know, there's always a link to the Christie in in, in, in this area. You know, there's always somebody who, who's, who's had a fantastic treatment there. And, it is just, you know, it, it has affected your life in any way and other people's lives. It's just a great thing to be able to do. I mean, you know, I'm hoping that even afterwards, when people have been out and had a good night, they can come back in, have a, have a few drinks, rent early doors, and just watch that for a couple of hours, because they never anything on the There's only that fellow yeah. doing... You know that fellow doing gobble box with that funny voice, and he's not he's not worth listening to. <laughs> Do you know what? We we watch Goggle Box and, and Craig yeah. obviously does the voiceover, don't say for Goggle Box, but you just kind of go there's all that, yeah. And we're thinking, oh, we could be a good family in that. You know, I think everybody believes it could be a great yeah, family yeah. watching yeah, Goggle yeah, Box. Yeah. It's uh it's genius. Talking of families, obviously, not only did you co-write. Um, early doors, but you did writing yeah. on this little show. I mean, it wasn't yes. that successful, was it? The royal family. <laughs> what was it? Well, 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. There are, God yeah, knows no. who they are. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, it's just a little program. On, I remember it a while ago. But yeah, yes. Uh, when I well, I uh, I started writing it in two thousand and five or six. I think the first one I did was uh, the Queen of Sheba, where the first was. Oh, you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. That so makes me cry every I, time. I didn't kill her off. It wasn't, my, it wasn't me, you know. But uh, wow. yeah, yeah, it was great though, fantastic, you know. And th again, you know, the, the cast are just like it's one of those things, you know. You you write as a you know you write things. Sometimes you write things, and you, and somebody acts it out, and you think, no, oh, it's it's not as good as as we. With their own family, it was never like that. It was always, they always gave you something extra. And Ricky, you know, Ricky just, well, they're all amazing, but Ricky would be brilliant because if you needed something to cut to, I was there messing about with his ears or picking his nose or doing something, you know, so if you're like, if you're stuck on a shot, you could always pick to Ricky cleaning his belly button out or something <laughs> gross so that you could go back somewhere else. But yeah, no, just fabulous. And of course, you know, lovely Caroline, you know, I mean, I've, I've known Caroline for 30 years. I knew when she was uh, signal, that was KFM radio then in, in, in Stockport. So, and she's, you know, really just, you know what I mean? I mean, it's five years ago now. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible how long it is, but. Well, the yeah. legacy, the legacy that she left, I mean, she was absolutely just outstanding. A comedy, a timing. Yeah. I remember Mrs. Merton. And for oh, me, yeah. one of the classic things that she said on Mrs. Merton was when yeah. she said to, um, oh, Paul Daniel's wife. Yeah, and she was like, yeah. she went, oh, what attracted you to the millionaire Paul Daniels? Yeah, <laughs> I, was yeah, like, yeah. I was like, it's genius. It yeah. really is genius. That, I mean, that's the sort of, you know, and that was Caroline's line that, that it was her, she wrote that line. Think, oh man, that's, that'll go down in history. Only that line is just, you know, what first was attracted to doing air Paul Dan. Fantastic. It's just brilliant, you know. I love but, yeah. it. She, she's great, Caroline. She's so, when, at a funeral, we went to, when we went to a funeral and the, the priest who was doing the, the, the service said, Caroline, He'd gone round because um, um, the, the mum's a very religious Catholic uh, woman, and, and they went out to the house. And Caroline, the team, Caroline turned up. And the, he's, the next thing, Caroline said, Let's do that trick where you know, when you're in a chair and you close your eyes, and then you, you think you're being lifted up, and you fall your head, and you think you're a bit seen. He was doing that to the priest. He was telling this story. It was Caroline was like, Here, let's do this. Somebody did it to me. You'll love this. She had no kind of filter like that you know to I me mean? she was just up for fun you know all the time she used to always write not when we go right to her house um one time i had a pair of like they weren't hush puppies but she called them and she said what's richard bryan now you've got his shoes phil his old man's shoes and i was like you cheeky and then next day I went round and there was a note of, please anyone with richard bryan's shoes on please do not enter you know, she would just thought she just was really up for fun, you know, all the time. Yeah, and so. that's, that's that's why people loved her. That's why people yeah. loved her. Talking of comedy and making people laugh, uh, my son's got a question for you. So oh, here you go. Here's Harry for you, Phil. On tonight's show, we've got Phil Mueller and Helen Davis. No, but it that's wasn't that one. It wasn't that one. It was this one. Phil, how did you become Phil, how did you yeah. become funny? How did I become funny? Oh, that's a, that's a tough question. I, um, I had a dad who wasn't, <laughs> so I had to somewhere. Um, I don't know, really. I just, I, um, I was always looking about it. It's just that usual thing, really. I think underneath it all, I'm shy, really. So I just kind of, you know, it's that thing where you just try and put a bit of a mask on. I've always been sort of good at impressions and things like that. So I was always, you know, doing that kind of stuff in school. So, yeah, that, that uh, but there is, I always think 
so I love working with other people. Like I love working with Craig. I loved working when we were in Caroline. Because when you're working with other people, I think you try and top each other. You try and not try and top each other as like you know, but shoot them in. <laughs> I mean, top each other as as kind of you know, like Craig would say, for something funny, and I think, oh, that's really funny. How about if you said that and try and make it funnier? And playing cards, you always want to put an ace down on top, and I think that brings out the you know the, the humor a lot more as well. But yeah, I mean, the, the, I myself and Craig have written a comedy play that we we've, we've finished. Uh, we were hoping to put it on this year, but I think it's like it's going to be towards the end of next year now. Um, and that's, you can't wait for that. That's really fun. It's just, there's no pathos in it. There's no ah oh, moment. It's just full on laugh, laugh. comedy. Laugh, laugh, laugh. It's quite um, farcy as well, in a way. It's about this guy who runs a bed and breakfast in Bull with his wife who he's sort of not getting on with and he's having counselling. So you see he's come out with counselling, you see him with his wife, uh, sort of in the reception of the hotel, the counselling and upstairs in his sort of lounge and the cleaning woman. There's only four people in the cast. It's very, well, we think it's, you know, we think people will, will really like it because it's, it's- I'd make cool. a good cleaning woman. Oh, you have to apply in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Michelle, you might be too glamorous. Can we? Can you? Can you? Jump, can you I can do Mrs. Overall. Can you? Can you? Two I can suits. try. Can you do that? Two suits. Yeah. Well, you have to get. Well, when we do the open auditions, love, you'll have to come along. Well, All right, we will do. Hey, do you know what? I'm after everything that you do because look at this, right? Obviously, you can see this part of the hive behind me. I but check out this. I've got my own, the grapes from Early Doors. Oh, wow, well, yeah. Look at that. That's your side, Phil. We've That's got optics. Fantastic. Oh, look at it. We've hey, got I an empty champagne bucket because we're poor. I'm not being funny, but um, I think them two are underage. I, I don't think you run your establishment uh, to the law, to be honest with you. You could have revolt if you're not careful there, Michelle. I know, I know. It's, they, they, there's no last orders in yeah. the hive. I mean, you know what I mean? Those, they're at least 14 before they go in a pub, haven't they? You know that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wish I got ID'd now. I never get oh, that yeah. at the supermarket. Somebody did that to me the other day, actually. I was like, you're joking, aren't you? Uh, don't look so surprised, Michelle. Come on. Yeah, you know what I mean? Come on, well, I talk to you. Oh, Bill, yeah. Bill, I'm just looking back to that picture because no change. No change there, is there? Look at that, not great. Yet. Got a bit of hair as well. Look at it, yeah. I'm joking, I'm joking. Look. It has been lovely to chat to you this evening. I you. will see you on the 31st of July. If anybody yes. is interested in coming on the night, it is going to be absolutely fantastic. It's going to be yeah. a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. If you're a big fan of Early Doors, God, you get to see some of the cast on stage. You can even heckle them. Yeah. <laughs> and you raise your money for a fantastic night. you want to go to Christie, you can exactly it. exactly yeah. it's going to the christie and all you need to do is go to the website i'm going to go pop to the website, website up yeah, yeah the uh to book tickets just go to the christie website there and you should be able to get them so i will see you bye for now get out oh. of my pub <laughs> Ah. All right then. Thanks for inviting me to your hive, Michelle. And uh, anytime, Phil. All, All right. right. Take, Take care, care, lovely. Bye.